We're now in the church season of Lent, the 40 days before Easter that do not include Sundays. During these days, so many do without some things so that others may have more. We may also examine our lives and reorient them through prayer. Finally, we may focus on what the prophet Micah declared, to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Join with others taking this journey. Join us in the opening words. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank the Lord who forgives all our sins. Thanks be to God. reminds us that we come alongside of Jesus and we confess our sins. We try to get out anything that impedes our relationship with God, and sin certainly can do that. So join me as we pray together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against each other in what we have thought in what we have said and done. Some sins come from ignorance, others through weakness or deliberate acts. We are sorry and ashamed of our transgressions. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness into the light of Christ. Amen. Join us now in the sung response. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. 
incline thine ear to us, and grant us thy peace. Amen. Let us pray. O Holy Spirit, illumine our hearts so that we may be ready to hear your word and respond in the journey that we face ahead. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear now a portion of Psalm 22 that we usually hear from the beginning, but this week we start with verse 23. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the afflicted, affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and the families of the nations shall worship before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him." Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we hear the paraphrase of the psalm by Michael Morgan, uh, put to music by our vocal quartet. familiar with Psalm 22 because Jesus quoted its opening words from the cross when he said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The psalm goes on in verses 16 through 18, other words that take us back to Calvary. Dogs are around me, it reads. A company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. And from my clothing, for my clothing, they cast lots." Unquote. See how familiar, familiar that is to Christians? But we rarely go beyond 
the words at the beginning of Psalm 22. Today we'll begin with verse 23. Charles A. Wiley, Associate of Theology in the Office of Theology and Worship for the Presbyterian Church USA, said this about the second half of Psalm 22. Quote, Who is God? What is God like? Can we trust God? Psalm 22 raises such questions for us. In the Christian tradition, they have been answered, answered by extolling the perfections of God, the attributes of God, or in the contemporary period, through a narrative approach. Psalm 22 answers these questions through an antiphony between uh, appropriate fear of God and declarations of God's providential care for those who are most vulnerable, going from one to the other. This interplay between fear and care gives us a glimpse of the God whom the psalmist worships." Unquote. So from Psalm 22, 1 through 22, we get a picture of agony. But God is faithful and delivers those who are in anguish. We know it from the cross to the empty tomb. This writer explains it as a catharsis, as a general exploding of praise and tributes because of deliverance. There are certainly dreadful experiences that do not easily lead faithful people to praise. A child with a dreaded disease, or a parent dying of COVID-19, or a sudden, sudden deadly car accident created by a collision from a texting driver. To paraphrase Psalm 137, how can we sing the Lord's song when we are filled with abject sorrow? One answer is having the faith of Abraham, as in Genesis 17. Abram and Sarai, uh, and in the passage, become Abraham and Sarah because they witness God keeping promises, and they were amazed. Another answer is to remember the steadfast love of God that will not let us go. Just because bad things happen to good people does not mean that God has withdrawn holy care or steadfast love. Once a reason to praise occurs to the one who was once in anguish, he or she might do what the psalmist did, invite other friends to join him or her in the worshiping assembly to give thanks and praise to witness the giving of extra offerings so that the poor can eat and be satisfied, to invite friends, too, to give extra offerings, and then together to give thanks to God and perhaps remember the life of a loved one or two. The old Sunday school lesson taught to the young might be said also from Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our women's group and our vacation Bible school studied the book of Esther one year. Our one scholar has suggested that, quote, David composed Psalm 22 in anticipation of the exile and future deliverance of God's people by Queen Esther, whom they pictured praying at each time she passed through the king's idol-filled chapel." Unquote. Once again, a reference to Abraham being a father of a multitude is recalled even as, quote, all who sleep in the earth bow down. As verse 29 describes, and quote, before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him, unquote. Do you live for him like David does? If so, we are to testify to those around us and remember those who have gone before us and hope for those who come after us that God in all times will always be honored and praised. Even Jesus in his anguish 
at the hands of the torturing mob said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The last line of the psalm, and proclaim his deliverance to people yet unborn, is a call for one generation to call to the next. Our God is good and his hand is strong. That was part of the gathering song we sung for our Wednesday night gatherings called The Epic Story. We always are charged with telling our children and our children's children about the love and the faithfulness of God. Join me again for our Sunday service beginning at 8 a.m. on YouTube at WBTS Church or on our website at WBTS.org and again next week for our Lenten Psalm service. Now let us close with prayer. Please join me. Lord, our God, make us pilgrims throughout these 40 days. We pledge to walk in the light of your word and by the power of your spirit. Strengthen us in our commitment, we pray, that we may serve you and each other in the love of Christ our Lord. Amen.